Listen, thanks so much for taking time to chat to me. Great pleasure, Bridget. <laughs> so if you can just um, tell us what your job title is and uh, what your role is at Odicom. Yes, so I'm uh, an audiologist yeah. and I'm the National Training Manager, which involves uh, all things educational and uh, uh, learning about new technologies. So what's the hot topics for this year in terms of audiology, hearing, uh, listening? Yeah, well, we're looking as, a, uh, as an industry more at uh, the relationship between uh, listening and hearing and the brain. Okay. And this is really an important relationship to be aware of because uh, a lot of the processes involved in listening are in fact cognitive. Okay. And so we can't just look at hearing technology as improving hearing, but actually on our ability to listen successfully, and to take part actively in social situations where things are noisy and difficult to focus your attention. And we're seeing some really exciting technologies that are actually making a difference in this regard. So are you saying that um, we don't hear in the ears, we hear in the brain? That's exactly right, and, yes. And um, if we hear in the brain, we aren't just using listening, we're using our whole brain for that process. That's right. Okay. A lot of listening successfully is being able to focus your attention okay. on what's important to listen to at that moment in time. And uh, if we're not able to do that well, then it's a lot harder to follow conversation. And how does hearing loss affect our ability to listen and use our other brain processes to concentrate and pay attention? Well, the main thing, I think, is that the brain doesn't get the right kind of information that it needs to do those processes okay. well. Okay. Um, and so other aspects of cognition have to come in where the person has to work hard to figure out what's being said rather than just doing it naturally. So the brain is revving harder. That's right, okay. yes. yes. And what are the effects of the brain revving uh, harder every day over the long term? Well, the effect for the listener is that they're just tired. Okay. Uh, they're having to work so hard to listen that they're exhausted at the end of the day. And many people actually just don't bother going out to dinner and doing things where they know that listening will be difficult. So they start to withdraw okay. from those situations. And um, how does hearing loss affect brain fitness? Well, uh, some very interesting data has come out of France recently okay. that showed that uh, using hearing aids um, can actually have a protective effect against cognitive decline. Uh, when comparing people over a 25-year period, they found that uh, those who have normal hearing and those who have hearing loss but are using hearing aids have a rate of decline in their cognition that is not as great as those who have a hearing loss but don't actually use hearing aids. So in other words, when we have hearing loss, that affects the ear and therefore the ear slowly sends weaker and less clear signals to the brain and the net result is the brain is not being kept fit, the, um, the nerve fibers in the brain become sluggish and out of shape. Very much so. It, very much a use it or lose it kind of thing. Okay. So you, you need to be continuously keeping those paths in the brain open in order to, uh, to listen successfully um, yeah, and do all the things you need to do in a social gathering. So in, in a way, people may think hearing aids make them old, but in fact, hearing aids keep the brain young and Absolutely, fit and yes. in shape. Very much so, just as we need to exercise to keep our bodies in shape and to uh, stave off the processes of aging for as long as we can. It's absolutely the same with our brains. We need to work at it to keep them fit and young and hearing aids can definitely help with that. Okay. So um, what would your message be to someone who is battling with the idea of using hearing aids not using hearing aids and the feeling of being old and not really wanting to explore them? I would say um, you're not alone. A lot of people still have that perception of hearing aids, but go and talk to a hearing care professional. Um, hearing aids are not the ugly big beige bananas that your grandma used to wear and, and that whistled and didn't work. Hearing devices today are sleek, 
sexy, very discreet, very sophisticated pieces of technology that can do so much to help you keep your brain fit and to stay young and you've got to give it a chance. So can you tell us a little bit about the latest technology from Oticon? Yes, certainly. So it's a family of devices called Open uh, and uh, this uses an approach to technology which doesn't close down the sounds but actually opens up your sound environment so you can easily uh, tell where different sounds are coming from and then it's very easy for your brain to zone in on what you want to listen to and ignore the things that you don't want to listen to. And what uh, people that have been using this technology have said to us is it is actually so nice and comfortable and so easy to go into even the noisiest restaurant and you know enjoy a meal with their family without having to worry about not hearing them. So it's a novel uh, concept within hearing technologies? That's right, yes. Um, so rather than using directional microphones, which kind of zone in on one speaker or one talker, um, it uses a completely different approach to managing noise that uh, deals with the noise so fast that it actually re removes all the annoying noise in between words. So you can listen to someone talking in front of you, uh, if someone's talking to the side of you and interrupts your conversation, you can access all of that speech so easily and, uh, and comfortably. So it almost is an experience which mimics natural hearing? Very much so. The sound quality that people report with the open devices is that it is just so natural. They almost forget that they're wearing them because it just sounds like normal hearing. And um, we have um, some surprises for early next year with the open family. That's right. So we'll be introducing some more styles. Uh, and also there'll be a few extra new features um, to help a wider range of uh, people with different hearing losses and needs. And where can people find out more about the Open product? Right, so uh, they can go to um, your website mm -hmm. uh, or uh, oticon.co.uk yep. uh, and Open comes up on the first page. And it's spelled O-P-N. That's correct, yes. yes. O-P-N, but pronounced Open. Thank you so much for your time today, Alison. It's been a great pleasure. <laughs> Enjoy the conference. Thank you.